Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Strategic Command American Civil War, a game that is developed by Fury Software, published by Matrix and Slytherin Games, and comes out on June 30th of 2022. So if you're watching this live on my Twitch channel right now, uh, it comes out tomorrow. If you're watching this on my YouTube channel, it comes out today. Uh, this is, I think, episode number five-ish of our Let's Play series playing as the Union in this strategic Civil War game. Uh, getting things out of the way quickly, I think the game struggles, so far anyway, in terms of its representation of tactical combat. Basically, there is no tactical combat. Uh, everything plays out on the strategic map, and armies fight each other in sort of an attritional style way. There are different size units between brigades, regiments, I don't know why I went in that order. Regiments, brigades, divisions, and corps. Uh, but you kind of have a bit of a stretched out front in a lot of these engagements or a lot of these campaigns um, that resembles something more like uh, an operational war of like maneuver in World War II or maybe World War I. I'm thinking when you get the stronger units like the cores, the fronts will constrain a bit. Um, the map does a good job of preventing it from ever being a real cohesive front line. It's just too big. It's the biggest map they've ever made. Um, so you're never going to have like a true front line. You can see like uh, a fair bit of separation around here between different units and things like that. Uh, but it's still not really Civil War-y. That said, what does feel Civil War-y and what I really enjoy so far is the naval campaign uh, as the Union to blockade the South, to do landings along the coast. Uh, we recently took Norfolk and uh, Elizabeth City. And so I think those things are pretty well done. I like bombarding the forts, blockading the various ports. Uh, we destroyed the forts to the south of New Orleans at most, in the most recent turn, as well as some gunboats and things like that. So I think that's fairly well done. I'm really curious to see if I play as the Confederacy, what the whole blockade runner situation is like, because I know they have blockade runner units. So like, do you need to try and escape? Is that something you should do? And, and if you do, like, how does blockade running work? I don't know, but I would love to dig into that. I think that's one of the areas of the, of the war that interests me the most is the idea of like running a blockade uh, and the blockade runner stuff. Um, I've actually been really kind of into it lately, partially because of playing the previous episodes in this series that I ended up purchasing James McPherson's book, War on the Waters, which is about the naval war in the Civil War. I didn't realize so many ships took so many prizes and that prize money was a big thing. Like it, it feels a little bit Horatio Hornblower Napoleonic uh, a bit. Um, but, uh, but yeah, anyway, we've already pretty much concluded our turn for November of 1861. Uh, we've already purchased everything. We've moved all of our units. So we're going to go ahead and end the turn, uh, and allow the Confederates, uh, to make their moves. I think unless these go to Key West, these guys are already going to the Mississippi river. So yeah, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump forward, I guess. Although I didn't move this cruiser. So let's go ahead and move them South. to uh, Norfolk. All right, I think we moved everybody else. Yep. Or everybody else that I want to move. Except for these gunboats. Okay. All right, so we have some brigades in the west suffering some attritional damage. That whole situation in Missouri right now is, uh, is a bit of a nightmare. We've got a lot of troops deployed with, like, no uh, no ability to supply them. Oh, by the way, um, what's his name? Like, Sims or whatever, the captain of, uh, was it the the Alabama or which whichever commerce reader? Oh, my God. <laughs> in that's uh, McPherson book. He's literally got this absolutely hilarious, like, not hilarious, but like for anybody who's like, the Civil War wasn't about slavery. Woo-wee, he's got a doozy of a quote there. <laughs> this is a Confederate captain being like, literally he's telling the, the, the consul in Brazil, we're fighting this war for you guys. We're fighting this war for slavery. And if we lose, then the British and the Americans are going to come after you and your slavery. It, it is a it's a it's a quote and he's saying this in 1861 all right so a thousand mpps collected for the union this turn not a lot of confederate movement there it seemed like they kind of hunkered down you know what would really be nice in this game 
is if like winter quarters matter. I think that's a, a, a thing that a lot of games struggle with, um, especially these kind of scale games really struggle with is being like, hey guys, it's winter. You're not moving. Now that's not necessarily true in the West where things are a little bit warmer and not so much everything's frozen down, but in the East, you know, with the exception of 62 in Fredericksburg, like 63, there's no major winter campaign. 64, I mean, they're kind of, I guess, going into 64. Well, that would be 63. Yeah, but I mean, like, going into 64, um, there's no major campaign. Going into 65, there's operations about around Petersburg, but they're pretty limited. Um, anyway. So we've got a regiment here surrounded at this fort in New Mexico. We have brought additional reinforcements there, so we are going to try and drive them back. Seems like the Rebs actually have quite a strong force there. You do love a random weather overlay. It's not entirely random. Plalm. Is that how I'm, am I pronouncing your name right? Plalm. The Rebs have surrounded Fort drum is it or dirt thorn who doesn't love a good chronometer though all right so some fighting south of harpers We're trying to build up forces in the West to make a drive through Kentucky now that Kentucky's joined the war on the side of the Union. Yeah, so, I, I mean, I wouldn't count that as 63, though. That's 62, Anaris. I guess that's the way I was thinking of it anyway. British, French, and Spanish forces seize the Custom House at Veracruz. Confederate armies in Mexico occupy the village of Teria. Confederate. Huh? All right, blockade runners. Um, no, you can definitely influence uh, a European intervention uh, on ours or cannon. I don't think that's likely for the Confederates anytime soon because we've taken some key ports like Norfolk, Elizabeth City, other things like that. But yeah, you can definitely cause a European intervention. I'm assuming that's not like the Confederates. I'm assuming that's like Confederates to the European. I, I don't know. All right, so let's buff up our troops in Kentucky a bit. Let's put these guys in Louisville, march them south. We got a nice little armored train here. I guess we can move that across the river maybe into Kentucky. It looks like the rail line crosses here. I'm curious how that'll work. Uh, new gunboats, put them on the Mississippi. Burns Division. We'll buff up our troops in Kentucky. We're really gonna buff up our troops in Kentucky. I need new headquarters is what I really need. I mean, the Union had like 100,000 troops in the West, right? Can I deploy any of these guys to New Mexico right away? Because the situation there doesn't look great. And deploy them here? No. I can deploy them on the, the transfer hex. Oh, I can't even do that. Meanwhile, I've got some river ironclads. Three of them coming in this turn. Should solidify the Mississippi force. Two weeks on Steam, Anna, but it actually comes out on the 30th on Matrix's website directly, so it depends on how you want to pick it up. All right, so... Our supply situation here is not great. Okay. 
let's hit this enemy cavalry here. Bastards. So we, we battered this cavalry brigade, but we couldn't finish it off. Meanwhile, I've got these troops cut off down here, not doing anything. Didn't, I had an amphibious task force here, didn't I? I did. Go take Hickman. Yeah, yeah. Cut off these Confederate cavalry near Paducah. Meanwhile, oh, this is Fort Henry. Donaldson or whatever it is. Let's bombard these river forts. Open the Confederacy up. Really? The ironclad didn't do jack? Huh. Well, we almost destroyed the fort, but we didn't. We didn't. I'm sure they're going to get... I don't think I have any additional forces that can bombard here. So they're going to repair it. Let's take... Oh, no! I did the whole slow prudent thing one hex at a time and then I decided not to do that. <laughs> Get them boys. We got a division coming in. Heinzelman's division hitting the uh, troops there. Let's go ahead and rail move you to Bowling Green. Halleck. Get your boys ready. Really need better cavalry or more of it. All right, troops are at London. Let's go ahead and move this division forward here. We're going to force march them into Danville. Cavalry, one of the things I've noticed in this game is cavalry is really goddamn important because your infantry can only see one hex ahead. So cavalry can see more than that. So you basically have no way to avoid like what just happened to my troops. Um, where we marched into the enemy down here because like yeah even if you move one hex at a time you can only see to the adjacent hex with infantry so if you don't have any cavalry out ahead of you you're always going to run that risk of moving into a hex where you can see there's nobody but you don't know what the adjacent hex has and then if there's enemy troops there you're gonna you're gonna get sort of that surprise counterattack against you whereas cavalry has a longer spotting range and so they can see further out and prevent those kind of mistakes like i just made Uh, again, I only moved one hex here and got shot up pretty bad here. So really, I need to invest in, in some horse, some horsies. These rebs can't have very good supply. They don't. See, there again, I move one hex and I move right into the enemy troops. The only positive for us in West Virginia is while the Rebs definitely outnumber us and have the advantage here, they do not have supply. Ajod's definitely like a big, a big Civil War title. My main issue with Ajod is the interface is so hard to tell what the hell's going on. And so, like, even even if you're like, all right, you know, I'd like something a little bit deeper. So like if you can't tell what's going on, I don't know, in my opinion, like, what's, what's the point, kind of? Shit. All right, so we've got a division down here near Culpeper. We'll attack the troops defending here. 
all of these troops will get the support or the pr prepared attack bonus or whatever you call it um when you attack without moving you get a bonus which is i think a nice a nice feature also one other thing you can do to, to get some good intel is uh use your balloons So we've uh, begun encircling the brigade at Culpeper. I don't know what the Rebs have out in front of us out here. Let's go ahead and bombard this fort near south of Fort Monroe. Okay. Petersburg is... Isolates Industries in Richmond. Interesting. Okay. Farragut's Marines... All right, let's reinforce these guys. All right, I don't really intend to drive too far inland. Elizabeth City and Norfolk were the key objectives of this drive. Um, gunboats. Let's get you down here. We're gonna we keep sending more gunboats to the Mississippi. We'll we'll take a look at that in a sec. I think we move the Eastern Theater about as best we can. This rail line here being cut near Hagerstown would actually be a pretty damn big inconvenience for the Union, but it's only moderate in this game. Um. Okay, so we moved all these guys. I don't want to attack with them. They have no supply. Do any of the hexes around them have supply? All right, I'll pull back there. These rebs have goddamn good supply. I don't know where they're drawing it from. Let's pull these troops out of St. Louis, rail them toward Rolla. Am I role playing McClellan and refuse to move? No, no, no. We'll, we'll attack. In due time, in due time. I'm sure that's what McClellan said. Fair not, we're just getting ready. Can I just say that New Mexico sucks? Like, in this game, fighting in New Mexico sucks. You got, like, one narrow road to advance along. I got no headquarters out here probably need one let's reinforce these guys <laughs> gotta retake that shit all right so diplomacy do i have any chits i do not we've already invested everything great britain zero percent chance of intervention Spain's the only one that's like kind of like, hey, and then the, the Navajo here is 71% intervention for the Confederates. Um, we are investing a little bit of chance, a little bit of diplomacy in Spain. Mostly we're just relying diplomatically on our, uh, at least in Europe, on our uh, military success. But let's go ahead and purchase some headquarters here. I can't. 
I have no more headquarters I can purchase. Also, what am I supposed to do with the Mexican military? Because they're not mine. I can't even build anything there. Like, I don't know why they're in our units. It is possible, I think, for Mexico to join the war against uh, the Confederacy. I'm assuming that's why they're there. Uh, what about R&D? Because we did finish Naval Tech, right? So Naval Tech 1 was finished. So that gives us another 50, 150 we can invest. We can put that into Cavalry Tactics, which... Uh, ironclads, we could invest it. We're not investing in Ironclads at all. We need to do that. Maxes out R and D. I'm assuming the mountain divisions might be good in West Virginia, so like maybe we should invest there. I'm just buying a lot of fucking divisions of troops. Um, also, we still have 78 points left. Because we did the naval tech thing, all of our naval ships... I, I don't know if that's like naval tactics were upgraded. So I guess we'll just do that. Thanks for the follow, Breeder. Alright, so... What's going on here? We destroyed the fort south of New Orleans. I guess let's bombard the forts south of Mobile. Other frigates, because why the hell not, right? Nice! You did some damage there. Some harassing fire. And then next turn, maybe we'll send our gunboats up the uh, Mississippi. destroy the New Orleans levees. Wouldn't mind bombarding New Orleans itself and moving up the river, though. I need to get some troops out that way. One war at a time. Goddamn right. Um... Guys are in Denver, we'll leave them there. I think that's the end of this turn. Let's move forward to the next one. Collection of volunteer infantry and cavalry has been formed into units in California, known as the California Column, will soon will be available in New Mexico. When do the difficulties involved in crossing the Southern District and the great distance involved? Make a decision now as to which route this, team, this group should come. March along the old Butterfield Overland Mail Route, which would see it arrive at Fort Bowie in southern New Mexico. Alternately, we could send it north and have it follow the Oregon Trail and arrive in Denver. Bowie, yes, I think. Yep. 
Okay. Okay, the port of Eric. Okay. If it's still sought to distort our intentions and it's decided to humiliate us as a nation, to dismember our territory, to interfere in our affairs, perhaps even very break up our very nationality, I appeal to your patriotism. I conjure you to forget all your hatreds and jealousies, to sacrifice your fortunes and to shed your blood. Rally round your government for the defense of your common cause, the most sacred and grandest cause known to man as it is, as it is to you a united people. The cause of one. Do I have to fight as Mexico also? Uh. Okay, Benito Juarez. I don't really know that I'm going to fight in, like, because Mexico is part of the union unit tree. Industrial technology, 96. Uh, Big Terp, you can see in the title, it's not just war in the Pacific. Oh no, they flanked us. It's coming, Noah. Right. Oh, they just deployed the first division I've seen in the Eastern Theater as well. They advanced behind my gunboats on the Mississippi. I'm assuming there's a blockade running. And a river gunboat, I think. A cavalry division. All right. So some new Confederate units showing up here. Some stronger ones that we haven't seen yet. Charleston, West Virginia. Attacking out of the snow in the mountains. Kind of surprised they moved to Poplar Bluff. If only because I don't think they're going to have supply there. Yes, they cut ours, so that's probably good for them. But. Who would win the fight, bird on bird? I, I don't know. All right, Fort Thorn continuing to be a thorn in the rebel sides as they look to reduce that fort. Looks like they probably will this turn. Yep, they do. But it bought us time to redeploy their troops to New Mexico, which is important. Um, Scourge of War Gettysburg is, is I would say, ta uh, one of the top tactical Civil War games. Showing its age a little bit, I think. Bizarre Andrew, thanks for the resub. 22 months, dude. That's almost two years. You are almost double your subscriber length. It's almost double the age of my daughter. I appreciate the support. Yeah, I don't think the map changes. West Virginia got statehood early, I guess. Goddamn bushwhackers causing all sorts of problems. Uh, bushwhackers weren't a thing in Kentucky, were they? Seems a little bit, uh... Your immersion! The immersion! Oh no! The map has spoiled the immersion. Well... Alright, let's wait to deploy these troops. Oh, what is this? Blockade runner and... Both blockade runners? No. River gunboat and river timber clad. Okay. Well, we have three gunboats here. So we're going to go ahead and just whoop this guy. And actually, we can bring one of the frigates down because he's at the mouth of the river. So we'll do that. And destroy that enemy ship. We get a hundred uh, fighting spirit bonus. Didn't do any damage there, but. Oh, shit. Sailing through them, I guess, hurts me. Doesn't seem to hurt the the enemy ever, but just me. Bombard the forts, make them waste their money to repair it. Even if I lose some strength on my frigates. Hmm. 
That river gunboat is not dead yet. Um, yeah, I don't see any other major objectives to take from Elizabeth City at the moment. Of course, these Marines. Let's do this. Let's they're entrenched, I think. So we'll attack there. Get rid of their entrenchments. Huh. We basically attacked nonstop and did nothing did no damage against this brigade at Culpepper. Probably because of the weather, right? Like we're attacking in the snow, I'm guessing. Let's get this guy zero to four. Damn it, I didn't finish off that brigade. It's down to one. Set division down that way. We'll bring second division up toward Danville to move into London. God damn it. Just fucking ah! These ironclads suck at bombarding forts. Can we just agree on that? They have any supply here? I've got three. Okay. We gotta pull these guys up the river to re, re reinforce or resupply or whatever. Uh, meanwhile, let's move this armored train up here. I don't know what we can do against this division, but we'll at least get in the way. Maybe it's the fact that they're not actually... River gunboats, which is what's thrown. Like they're, I think they're ocean going gunboats. The enemy is being for reinforced with an armored train. Nice, and you can run past the forts too. Maybe not the wisest thing to do, but hey, we did it. Might lose that ironclad. Oh well. Uh, these troops, these guys are cut off. Got him.
All right, got that one cavalry brigade. These guys can't move anywhere. Price of our horses. Mexico look hit that lead regiment with our cavalry force march them down there get them into position with no morale left to fight keep the boys on the roadway that way they keep their supply Probably don't, I would think we don't need that many troops in New Mexico, but we'll see. More, more gunboats for the gunboats, gods. Send them to the Mississippi. Enforce these warships. Raider. Huh. All right, well, we can see if we can interdict that. I really need to make a move on New Orleans, but I need more troops for that. Purchase headquarters were already maxed. Mountain divisions were not. We've got a thousand points left. Did anything finish research wise, by the way? Oops. Uh, nope. Still maxed to 4,000. New units to deploy. Casey's division. I mean, I can't believe we have so many troops fighting in frickin' Arkansas. We really should move Grant over there. So I think we will. Okay. Couches division will deploy. to DC more troops to Kentucky I might have just deployed uh, Chamberlain to uh, Kentucky Okay, so we've got a thousand points. We should really buy some cavalry divisions. So buy two of those. I don't really know what rangers do for me. More gunboats. Or forget. They can't go up rivers. So we'll just do gunboats. We can do two. Alright. All right, well, that's going to move us. We're already in 1862, so let's move forward one more turn tonight. And see what the Rebs do to us. 
Haitian President Fabry Gaffrod begins sending aid to the Dominican re rebels. Pro-Union bandits cause disruption in Confederate Kentucky. Edward Stanton is Secretary of War. John Tyler dies. First Japanese embassy leaves for Europe. Naval weapons level one. Hell yeah, brother. Core organization. Yes, let's build some cores. Industrial level one. It should give us more money. I'm curious how the tech tree is different on the Confederate side. Like, is, I would imagine blockade running is a thing, like, for the Confederate tech tree. They're going to keep moving cavalry into places where they have no supply. Okay. Some reinforcements. All right, well, they didn't destroy the gunboat there, so that's good. They destroyed that brigade, though. No, I'm sure I'm sure you can build like cotton clads or something like that. Well, maybe you can build timber clads too, I don't know. Okay. They just attack banks directly. Now, as a reminder, in this game, one of the big differences with this game as opposed to the previous strategic commands is if a headquarters unit is destroyed, that particular general is lost for the remainder of the war. So as headquarters units are destroyed, you can reform headquarters again, but it has to be with a new general. Yeah, cotton clads were a thing. Big soft armor captures high speed cannonball. Okay. I really. The bleeding Kentucky wasn't a thing in the Civil War, was it? Nothing was high speed cannonball. That's true. One of the reasons the the wounds were so goddamn gruesome, right? Alright. Hey, we got burnsides. All right, hit these, hit these rebs. Well, we didn't do much in New Mexico this turn. Maybe next time. Guys of five supply. My own supply situation isn't great here, though. Okay. Fort Henry is not that big of a deal. Fucking just die. Armored train, armored train. Nice. Division versus enemy brigade. Well, claimed three to one. Definitely didn't get it. Okay. 
Let's go after London, Kentucky. I need to reinforce West Virginia. Go after these guys. It is snowy, but prepare to tax around. We should be able to hopefully reduce this brigade to nothingness and clear out Maryland from uh, the clutches of the Rebs. Right, there we go. Secure that rail line. too bad all right so we're advancing down the valley here toward Winchester guys back let's actually pull back and wait for better weather Is that I don't even know who that headquarters commander is for the Rebs. Probably Lee or some nonsense. Upgrade the naval weapons on the frigates to level one. So there is a division blocking Petersburg as well as a brigade. Okay. So if these guys advance east, cut our troops off toward Norfolk, we can always bring in these troops to cut them off. really doing anything on the Atlantic Coast blockade right now. Right, let's get these guys. got the two forts down there we can go ahead and pull some ships back to pickings as well to reinforce and then we'll just have to slowly reinforce the tr the ships in the gulf um port royal is ours so let's reinforce some of these guys as well i think 
Let's move this frigate down here. Or this gunboat to stay on the blockade line there. Hey, Gunslinger, good to see you. Larab also, good to see you as well. Right, new units, where are we going to deploy you? Cavalry units, I need some in the east. Burnside's HQ. Probably most urgently needed. Maybe in eastern Tennessee. Sure, because we've got we've got Grant here, right? Um Yeah, it's at Eastern Kentucky. Buford's cavalry also needed in the East, I'd say. One of them will go to the valley. Blunt will go ahead and move him to Kentucky, I think. We've got plenty of cavalry in Missouri. But we need some cavalry in western Kentucky. Portsmouth, New Haven. And then we've also got the Monitor. Although I don't know that the monitor arriving matters as much since we've taken Norfolk. Uh, research. So we've actually had a bunch of research items to finish. So let's go with... I don't know what the core organization does for us. Like, level one core organization does what? just the number of cores you can deploy. Let's do... Cavalry equipment. What do skirmishers do for me? Me with 430 something left to buy stuff, which isn't enough for a core, but it is enough for a division. Or let's, you know, rather let's do Marines and then a river gunboat. Okay. All right, so I think that's going to do it for this turn. And I think that's going to do for tonight's stream, guys. So thanks again for coming out. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, a little bit of a shorter one, but this is our look at Amer or, uh, Strategic Command American Civil War. Uh, the game comes out tomorrow on Matrix Games website, um, 6.30. So I guess if you're watching this after the stream, then today. And uh, until next time, uh, and then I think about two weeks later on Steam. But uh, until next time, guys, it's the Historical Gamer saying thank you once again for watching. And until next time, I'm out.